Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com and uh, the past like month or so I've been able to mess around and play with and beta test Cinema 4D R14 and uh, since everyone just got the beta uh, just last week during Seagraph uh, I figured I'd be able to start doing tutorials and show you guys how to actually use it and talk about it when you guys can actually know what the heck I'm talking about and play with it yourself so um, I'm sure you've heard all about, you know, sculpting seems to be the big thing everyone's talking about. And really, I, I, I don't sculpt. I'm a motion graphics dude. So I don't do any modeling or anything like that. So I wasn't so enthused about that. But uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll, you'll know that one of the things that uh, I've really been having fun with is aerodynamics, uh, the new... Uh, dynamics function that they added and uh, I noticed this was missing you know I was working on a, a, my uh, one tutorial the springs and spline dynamics uh, with floating balloons and uh, I did this render and I, I played with the turbulence and wind settings and all the things in dynamics that you can possibly play with and this is the result that I got so all that work and it's not looking good at all this balloon back here come on this balloon back here is just standing straight up it's not getting blown around knocked around by the wind or turbulence or anything so when I found out they were adding aerodynamics to R14 I was like all right well let's go back to uh, this project and turn on the aerodynamic settings and see if it actually you know the balloon actually uh, gets blown around by the wind like it would naturally and uh, it actually did so uh, I'm going to show you how I got that look and show you a little bit about uh, aerodynamics in R14 so uh, got my balloon in the scene uh, I added a wind object down here it's pointing up so the wind is blowing upwards because we want our balloon to go up right so we got our turbulence here as well and uh, right now the aerodynamics winds on so we're actually going to just do it uh, back to its default settings for now uh, I'm going to show you what it would normally look like uh, without aerodynamics. So first things first, let's go to our balloon and let's get our rigid body tag. Uh, force, you can see that we have aerodynamic settings here already, um, but we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with that right now. So this is with uh, like wind, uh, non aerodynamic wind and turbulence. So let's bring these values up zoom out here and hit play so it's looking pretty much the same let's actually bring the wind down so we can see what's going on uh, this is that's a little bit too low we get back here okay so this is how it was looking in the video that I just showed it looks lame and doesn't react with the wind so I'm gonna show you I'm gonna turn on the aer aerodynamic settings in the turbulence go under mode there's aerodynamics wind that's what you want and we're going to turn it on here as well uh, turbulence settings yeah we want the scale up don't want to, well we'll let's leave up the strength for now so you can really really see the turbulence going so along with those aerodynamic uh, settings turned on on the actual particle modifiers here you need to turn on uh, the aerodynamic settings here the lift and the drag so what the lift does is actually if I bring this up uh, the lift is actually the lifting force so the lift is lifting the balloon up uh, and how that's working is it's actually recognizing all the polygons and pushing up against them and right now it's not doing too not a whole lot right there what uh, make sure oh because the turbulence down let's do 150 there we go so now all right so we got the lift going see that just need a turbulence so you, get, you really get the turbulence going it's balloons don't do that so we're not quite there yet so along with the lift is uh, a drag setting and the drag setting is basically like uh, like fr the friction force of the air so uh, if you bring this up, I always found that uh, for at least this balloon, you want the drag to be a little bit less than the lift. To, it kind of helps stabilize it, adds a little bit of friction. So it keeps that balloon 
uh, upright so it doesn't kind of hang down like it did. I mean, it still has the tendency to do that, but it's looking a little bit better. Uh, the last thing I figured out uh, to get this looking right, one thing uh, that's cool in R14 is, see this reflection? I have uh, a reflection in the environment channel that'll actually show up in your viewport now. I don't think that was, I don't think that was existent before. So if you have like an HDRI or something, you'll actually see your reflection on your objects or at least a really low res version so you can kind of get a handle of where they're showing up. It also works with shadows as well. So just a little cool little nugget. Uh, th there's a lot of really cool UI enhancements in R14 like when these uh, little icons light up when you hover over them. So cool stuff that I'm sure you guys are finding out already. But uh, so where were we? Okay, so oh, the last thing that you need to uh, understand is when you're working with these objects is that they're not going to, there's going to be a lot of tweaking. I had to get these turbulence settings and uh, the lift settings the right way. And there's also like the air, dens air density settings that you have to mess with too. Basically, the air density setting is a multiplier for the lift and the drag setting. So if I hit a five, you're going to see those, the air and lift really be more pronounced so it's really really interacting with uh, you know the lifts really pushing it pretty good and the drags working a little bit harder as well so you have a little bit more uh, interaction with the turbulence and the wind there uh, so let's turn that back down okay so the last thing you have to be aware of is uh, since it's working with your polygons and the shape of your object you have to be mindful of where the actual center of gravity is on your object. So with a balloon, uh, you know it has a specific center of gravity because of like the air in it, and it's it's not quite rotating right now how it would. It's still kind of like come up here. It's kind of tilted to the side till it slowly starts sagging to the left a little bit. Uh, and why that is? Because the center, the center of gravity is off, uh, off a little bit. Um, what you end up having to do is have to choose a custom center because when you throw a rigid body tag, uh, the center of mass is automatically calculated and that's not always right, especially when you have odd shaped objects like a balloon. So what I had to end up doing was playing with the custom center and the custom center on the Y axis here, this middle one, because the you know you want to have the center axis like in the middle here. Uh, so how I measured that is actually if I get a null, and I, let's go into my side, mo whoop, my side mode here and uh, drag that to the bottom and I bring this to the top. Uh, you know, I found the sweet spot is somewhere in from like 220 to 230 and that's what uh, actually worked the best with me. And it, it, it's a trial and error. Like all, the, all these settings, for me to get this look right, you're going to have to mess around with a lot of the air and the, the drag settings, the air density settings, the, the lift settings to get the exact look that you want. So, But I found that the sweet spot for the custom mass center was 325. So now if I back out here a little bit and hit it, now you're really seeing the turbulence acting on that balloon a little bit more realistically. It's kind of rotating and being jostled around as, as a normal balloon would. That's kind of hard to follow this guy come on zoom out a little bit so there you go uh, it's still tilting a little bit but you can really see that it's interacting with that turbulence much better uh, and kind of joss being jostled around the way it should and you can really get a sense of changing the center the you know, custom center of gravity uh, by putting in like really crazy values. Let me go back here. So let's do let's do 800. And so the the center, the custom center is going to be like up here somewhere, which is completely wrong. But you're going to see how that works. It's like so. If that's what you're looking for. That's the look that you want. Go for it. But that's looking kind of weird. So you can really see how important the the center 
the custom center is with uh, that works with aerodynamics because it can be completely off. And on the flip side, let's do like a negative number. So uh, the center of mass is like down here. So it's going to be flipping around this center of uh, mass. Hit play. And whoa. Let me zoom out. So that's not right either. So a lot of a lot of trial and error to try to get the right uh, custom center there going. Let's actually let's say we want to follow this guy all the way up. I'm going to show uh, another cool setting to uh, Cinema 4D R14 is the camera morph tag. And so let's say if I want a camera to follow this guy all the way up and I want to be able to control the movement the whole entire time, uh, what I can do is set up two cameras. And let's go to the view of the first camera here and get the look we want. You can actually mess with the fo focal length and stuff here. I'll do it to like, let's do 28. Zoom in here. And let's hit play because I'm going to move the second camera to be in view of the balloon at frame. Let's just stop at like 150. So let's go up. Find. So we're in camera one view, which is actually camera two. I just need to rename them. So there's there's the balloon. Let's rename these so we don't get confused. So it's camera one. That's camera two. So I have the view of camera one here. And if we go back to zero and hit the view of camera one, another cool feature is it actually will interpolate between the cameras. So you can get a, you get a little better sense of where your cameras are in the scene because it won't just snap into the second view, it'll actually just kind of dolly to the second camera view. So, all right, so we got camera one, and if I hit play, go all the way to 150. And if I hit the view of camera two, that should be in view of that. So I'm just using the one, two, and the three keys to change the rotation. So that's, that's looking good. So now, to set up our morph camera, I actually need a camera third camera to add the uh, camera morph to the camera morph tag to and you'll see we have simple morph with just one camera morphing to a second camera and we have multi morph which you can put in all numerous kinds of cameras you can add as many cameras as your heart's content uh, so right now we actually just need to morph from camera one to camera two so I'm going to put camera one and camera one and camera two to camera two. And uh, if I start at the beginning again and I hit uh, move the blend, you'll start to see, this is better to see in like a side view here, oh, wrong side. Whoop. There we go. So we got our two cameras. And when I bring a blend percentage up, you'll see this the morph camera interpolating between those two camera views. So it's really, it's extremely easier to uh, do camera moves, camera animation in your, uh, in your compositions now. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, it's at zero, so it's at camera one view, I'm gonna hit the keyframe and I'm gonna go all the way to frame 150 bring the blend all the way to 100%. So that'll be 100% in the camera two view. And I'm gonna go back to the frame zero, hit play. And right now I'm interpolating between camera one and camera two's view. So we get to follow this balloon all the way up. So we can see how this thing's looking. So pretty cool, pretty cool features to uh, R14 and as far as dynamics go. And there's a lot more additions that they added to uh, dynamics as well. Uh, such as like uh, plastic and braking springs with connectors and stuff like that and this also works pretty well with soft bodies but uh, this is just you know how, how, how it could work with a balloon or something non airplaney so uh, yeah, have fun with the beta and uh, if you would like to see what, uh, what other stuff you guys can do I'm going to actually post this file uh, so you can have my fun balloon scene and you guys can play around with getting your balloon to look uh, messing around with the wind look pretty realistic as well so uh, 
I'm going to be doing some more tutorials on some R14 stuff. If there's anything in particular you want to know more about and want to see in action a little bit more, just let me know in the comments section. And uh, have fun with the beta, guys. See you.